still on national matters. Leaders of the National Consultative Front, NCF, a frontline political pressure group on Monday, dissected the state of the nation and returned a grim verdict, which is Nigeria is on the edge, uh, the brink of the is on the edge of the brink and all hands must be on the deck to save the country. Consequently, the leaders said they are returning to the trenches to halt the free fall into the abyss. Leaders of the group who spoke on Monday at its maiden briefing held via Zoom include former presidential candidate Pat Otomi and former Speaker of the House of Representatives Gali Umarun Abba. Pat Otomi said they could no longer afford to stay in their comfort zones. And joining us now via Zoom from Lagos is Professor Pat Otomi himself. Good to have you, Professor. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be able to join you. Right. Now, back to the trench uh, sounds like language of the activists. Is it that, you know, going, is that going to be the approach of the NCF, uh, you know? Now, if you uh, listen uh, very carefully to the comments that uh, I made, we have a multi-staged approach to trying to save our country. When uh, the situation is grave, you have to apply peculiar methods, but we have sequenced intervention. And back to the trench in that sense is a last stage of a sequence of activities to engage. Uh, first of all, we're trying to sensitize the country to how bad the crisis is. Um, if you take what's going on, for example, like in a do state, if you are not concerned, then you are not really a patriot or a citizen. Because what's going on in a do state is just exactly what happened before the coup in 1966 uh, in, in the, in, in the so-called wild, wild west that led to the interventions that ultimately led to the loss of confidence in the system. But that is just one of so many things going wrong. The current state of insecurity. So we wanted to wake up the citizen from a state of lethargy, from a state of, uh, well, helplessness, if you will, to citizenship. And part of uh, uh, the series of activities that we have planned would lead us ultimately, if we don't get the appropriate response, to uh, the streets. Now, if you take, for example, uh, the fact that we are watching a number of very grave things creeping up without an appropriate response from government. And democracy is about accounting to the people. And we don't get the accounting, then we'll do a number of things. For example, we've got an elders forum and we've assembled men who are globally distinguished from Nigeria, who are in their 80s and 90s. Uh, one of them who is 90 years old, Dr. Umar Elazu, who was the first think tank chief in Nigeria, the federal government appointed him director of what was called the policy uh, uh, center, the think tank in the cabinet office, in the presidency in 1975, 76. Dr. Umar Elazu has listed a number of reforms that are imperative that we must move forward with now if Nigeria is going to work. Now, most people say, don't bother with anything that you put forward because National Assembly acting in self-interest will not enact it. And Dr. Elazu, Dr. Kolade, Elijah Balarebe Musa, uh, Professor Anya Anyani, host of these people in their 80s and 90s have said that they are willing, if we organize it, a hundred of them to sign this petition and come out to National Assembly until National Assembly begins to imp implement those reforms. Because most people recognize today that to say, get a political party ready, go and challenge the government in power. It's a futile effort because the democratic process is not working. Internal democracy in the parties makes it impossible for people of conscience to emerge from the leading political parties and work in the interest of the people. Our government has been reduced to government of politicians, for politicians, by politicians. If you look at how government responded, for example, the crisis in the economy, to the fact that Oil prices were tanking with Saudi Arabia and um, Russia going head to head last year. Mm. And National Assembly was still ordering uh, luxury cars for themselves, having incredible amounts of money in the budget 
needed to fix their building, more money than going to education, and all of those things that can revive the economy. Uh, people have come to a conclusion, it's not possible. You're wasting your time. And so we have said, if they do not act, we'll go to direct democracy. And direct democracy is to get the people to say, you cannot go like this. You are our agents. All right. no. Representatives are agents who are sent there to stand up for the interest of the people. If government is so disconnected from the people, then the people must go to a direct democracy. Professor, and we have said I that we have plans in place. We've worked, worked on this before. All right. I'm sorry I like have General to Basson interject. To Professor, if term, you can hear me. To develop a plan. I'm oh. afraid, can you hear me, please? Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry to interject. I mean, you, this group, you've put up a number of very quite cerebral uh, Nigerians and also experienced. But again, our question is, how do you intend to unite all of Nigeria to work together for this vision? You know, as you are pointing out there, many of us, many Nigerians or the country, as it were, it's divided along ethnic, religious, and even political lines. How do you intend to resolve this core issue? Well, first of all, this division is the machination of politicians. And Nigerians, if they see the truth, will walk past these so-called divisions. I was there in 1993 when they said it was impossible. Oh, a Muslim Muslim ticket will not work. And Chivem Biala picked Ambassador Babagana Kingibe. And then the thing was uh, annulled, the election. And the people came out across ethnic and other lines to say this is unacceptable. So Nigerians have repeatedly put, you know, to shame naysayers who give these examples and say that, oh, Nigerians cannot work across ethnic lines, cannot work across party lines. No, that is not true. The fundamental interest of people is their well-being. The dignity of the human person is fundamental. If you look at this group who work across party lines. This is not, you know, a, some kind of partisan initiative. This is a human dignity initiative that we are trying to uh, 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 engender. Uh, mm. If you look at the philosophy that we are putting forward, I was saying to several people, this last weekend was 70 years since the founding of NEPU in Kano. And those ideals that looked at the interest of the people have been lost in our current democracy. And we must bring back the citizen first, the people first. Government must now be about the people. Unless it is about the people, then something is wrong with our democracy. Right. This is just a movement to return power to the people. Uh, Professor, if I may in use... In many countries, we intend to try and do it here. All right. If I may use your, your words there, you said Nigerians have been repeatedly put to shame. Now, for... People of the younger generations, we often hear, you know, people of your generation, if I may put it that way, say that there was a Nigeria that really worked, you know, a Nigeria where everything seemed to be okay. There was light, there was um, good roots, good governance, all kinds of everything was put in place. For the younger generations, it is unfortunate that some of us, I mean, most young Nigerians have not witnessed or experienced that Nigeria, which I believe is the reason why you and your team are championing this cause. Now, it seemed to us, when we also look at the, the group, the people that are in this group, in the NCF, that there are not so much of young people represented. And so it looks like young people seem to be detached from this dream of yours. How do you intend to carry them not along? And it's interesting we are having this conversation because today is actually the International Day of uh, the Youth, of young people. So how do you respond to that, Professor? This is amazing because the whole movement is centered around youth. We have people, obviously, part of the problem with the nature of media, sorry to say this, uh, is that media focuses on people that they know, names that, that have, quote unquote, what's called news value. But central to this movement is young people. Uh, my personal uh, mantra is that every generation needs to make its shoulders available for the next generation to stand on so that they can see tomorrow more clearly. All of my adult life work has been about how to empower, support the next generation to take charge. 
And so we have an army of young people that we are organizing. If I, if you don't mind my throwing out a name, there's a young, very, very young lecturer in, in Kano uh, um, who has developed a whole strategy that's based on tertiary education and mobilizing your students across Nigeria for a new Nigeria. Uh, this young man, if he's not embarrassed that I mentioned his name, uh, Sidi Ali uh, and Nazar, uh, uh, you know, and his groups are working different structures. I've talked to the presidents of the student movements in the last couple of weeks who want to revive these organizations. When we were young, when I was 19, we were student leaders that got known across the country. People knew us across the country. Uh, but today, uh, we don't know who the student leaders are. And that's what we want to change. If you read my last book, I talk about conversations that I've had with General Akinia Day, you know, when people were complaining about uh, the fact that 39 year old then emerged in France and all of that. And General Akinia Day said to me, you know, people like you talking to me emerged because you were student leaders. Mm -hmm. What we have done is prevent the next generation after people like you from being able to take advantage of the student movement, which is where the Macrons and the so-called new leaders in Europe have emerged from by damaging the student movement. And so this our movement will help us revive the student movement, mm. NANS. I was talking to the new president of NANS three days ago. And across Nigeria, with one voice, take the youth to take back their country. Mm. When countries get into a real mess, it's always the young that save, save them. Mm. Uh, even America, uh, when I lived there under Jimmy Carter and there were problems, and Reagan, a very, very old man. And this is really the analogy, the metaphor we need for now. When you see people like me out there, Reagan, the oldest man at the time to run for president of the United States, woke up the youth of America. And as a result, we had the dot-com revolution. And the youth of America came out when America's economy was collapsing and literally created a new economy that saved America. Right. This is what we want to do now for Nigeria. Let us, the aging, wake up our young to save our country. Right. That really is what this strategy is about. Well, Professor, I am looking forward to this Nigeria that you are talking about. I am really, really hopeful and looking forward to that. And having said that, you again alluded to part-time legislature. You know, yes, this proposal has been on the table, you know, including the 2014 National Conference. What is the different thing in your request this time that will ensure implementation? Because what we need at this point is action and not just more of the conversations that we've always had in the past. That, that is precisely the point we are making. That is why I've said that uh, uh, Elder Dr. Uma Ilazu has drafted, uh, if you will, a Bill of Rights, which a hundred people like him are going to take to the National Assembly and camp out there until they begin doing something. And if they don't begin doing something, then everybody should start getting their green and white scarves ready because we'll go into the streets all carrying our green white scarves. Two, three million of us will be there until they begin to change the laws. Mm. This is what we must do to take back our country. Right, Professor. Before I let you go, you also talked about the rot in NDDC. Now, isn't that an indication that allowing people, so to say, controlling their resources will further impoverish the masses? What's your thought on that? Now, that is placed completely on its head. The reason NDDC is a mess is that people who run NDDC run it not for the people they serve, but at the behest of somebody in Abuja who sent them. And if you go and check most of the contracts and all those funny things, and why we should just be all so contract-driven, come from Abuja, you know, because who appointed them? Those people are the people they are serving their interests. So it is definitely twisting the thing on, on his head to say that uh, uh, the people can run their own affairs. That's not true. If the people themselves, if governments were based on the people located in that, then the, the worries of those people, the troubles of the individuals living in those places will be what will determine how governments act. But when some somebody in some nowhere, you know, somehow runs into some hunted down big game because somebody let him into the uh, killing field. Who would they think of? It's the person who let them in, not the people who are hungry in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So this is the 
the trouble really with Nigeria across the board. When a policeman in Kantagora is, and, and, and the, by the way, the governor of um, uh, uh, Borno, uh, Professor Zulum put it brilliantly in the last week in his troubles, complaining about the military and, uh, and the uh, local challenge of containing uh, Boko Haram and all, all of that. He says these people are alien to those people. If the thing came out of the bowels of the community, where the person on the street knows the people who create problems in the community, they can fight their battles and they can win the battles. Hmm. But because somebody is driven by power to determine in Abuja everything that happens in, um, uh, in Bu, everything that happens uh, uh, in the corner from Maiduguri, that is when you have the kinds of problems that we are having right. with security around the country. All right, I mean, we need I... power devolved to the people. Mm -hmm. And it is interesting how you put it there that uh, when the, the, the people fight their battles and they win their battles. Before I let you go, I know I had said this before, but before I finally let you go, uh, the National Consultative Front is coming to the fore. Uh, but we are also interested in knowing what is the future of NCF and help us clarify, is it going to be another party or it will remain a pressure group? Or what exactly is uh, the National <laughs> Consultative Front is going precisely to Precisely the point, the reason for the NCF is that a political party today isn't the way to change Nigeria. It will not work. You will not win elections. The whole system is, is rigged. It does not make any sense. Uh, 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 you know, so if we have to change the system first. We've got to begin to reform the economy, reform the, the politics, change electoral laws for using political parties, which is the basic instrument of democracy, to make sense. As it mm -hmm. is today, Unless you're a thief, you cannot win your party primaries. Let us be very honest. Uh, or your father, and I don't know how many fathers have left that kind of uh, money. Even if your father left you that kind of money, why do you want to spend it to serve the people? There are a few fundamental things we're going to insist on in the new Nigeria we're trying to forge. If you, join, if you hold public office, any public office, and you come out 10 kobo richer, that should be enough to go to jail. Hmm. That's the kind of law we want to pr produce. Public life must be about service, the sacrificial giving of yourself. If you know you don't want to get poor by serving the people, don't get into politics. So he's not going to have the money to run that kind of election. So he must come from the people. Look, when you, that's why one of the reasons to return to the parliamentary system, for example. When you have um, a, a, a Tafawa Balewa emerge, it's only the people in his uh, small constituency who have voted for him. And then he gets to where people like him have been elected, all from their constituency, from people who know them. Like when you come with father, who would ride his bicycle to, to his school in Portacourt, and the people knew him, knew this teacher who was committed to the community, and they sent him to parliament. And someone like that gets, like that gets to the parliament. All he thinks about are the problems of his people. But right now, when some money bag in uh, uh, Funtua or wherever can manage to, quote unquote, get all these votes around the country, he doesn't know what the problem of the person in uh, Iwoma is. Mm -hmm. And uh, he thinks that he owes the power to the money he spent getting there. So we have to change that system or we will not be able to serve the people well. The whole movement must be about connecting the people to the leadership. Right now, there's a complete and total disconnect. Mm. I want to say thank you so very much, Professor Pat Otomi, for sharing your thoughts and all the insights you brought, especially when you said, if you don't want to uh, be poor serving the people, then don't come into politics. I hope that uh, this message uh, will be received, really, by all those who intend to be leaders and who have the interest of this nation. And do keep safe. And thank you for the contributions on the state of the nation. Great pleasure. Thank you. All right, the news comes.